LSD, cocaine, and ecstasy are now just a click of a mouse away. And he's basically milky. the uh, eBay or the Amazon of the drug trafficking world. He also allegedly hired a hitman to kill a White Rock DC user. Was sentenced to life in prison without parole. Oh, it's a Silk Road story. Oh man, I actually completely forgot about that. For roughly 1,500 years, the Eurasian trade routes that spanned over 4,000 miles played a central role in facilitating economic, cultural, political, and religious interaction between the cool East man. and the West. The name Silk Road comes from the highly lucrative trade of silk textiles bit, Bob, that were maybe. produced almost exclusively in China. The sale of these highly sought after socks. goods is likely what led Ross Ulbricht <laughs> or Dread Pirate Roberts to adopt the name for his dark net marketplace. Though, instead of silks, he would be facilitating the trade of every illegal... How long has it been now since Silk imagine. Road? On January 27th, 2011, well, that was quick. I came across this website <laughs> called Silk Road. It's a tour hidden service right. that claims to allow you to buy and sell anything online anonymously. I'm thinking of buying off it, but wanted to see if anyone here had heard of it and could recommend it. I found it through this link, which if you have a Tor browser, directs you to the real site. Let me know what you think. This is the first ever mention of Silk Road anywhere on the internet. The user Altoid acting very poorly as an intrigued third party I thought his acting was fine. in word of mouth marketing of his new he venture. Ryu, it would be unfair Rio, to say the the this actional post cool. was a breadcrumb that led the FBI to the eventual closure of the Silk Road. It was a whole loaf of bread. As explained by IRS Special Agent Gary Alford, the way you found the creator of the website was through a simple Google search. Despite the Silk Road being only accessible on Tor, the browser That's... that gives users access to the dark web, Special Agent Alfred knew it had to be marketed somewhere, or how would people find out about it? In so that's what I talked about last time we were going over the uh, Tor shit. Basically anything on the, the dark web. Like, how do you get the word out besides just on the dark web? And I don't remember what the conclusion we came up with was. Like, I get Silk Road because obviously posting forum posts like that, but look what happened there. They got fucked. There's a tier one trailer. Hmm. Okay. So literally just from other dark web word of mouth. Okay. He simply googled the word Silk Road and dot onion and found smoky. exactly what he was looking for. He found Altoid. In posts that are still active on BitcoinTalk.com, he is seen advertising for an IT pro nice. for a Bitcoin-backed startup company and lists an email to contact him, rossulbrick at gmail.com, his real name. No. Of course, looking what? for developers for your black market operation while using a Gmail account He's with your real life name is not the best way to go about things. And since Altoid was a name that popped up very frequently when searching for mentions of Silk Road, this was enough to get a warrant for that email address. Ross Maybe was monitored until diabetes. undercover agents tracked him to San Francisco Public Road. Library, where they distracted him and grabbed his open computer. He was logged into the mastermind Holy of the Silk Road shit. website. Oh my god. These numbers looking kind of beefy. Oh god damn it. I miss light drawing the final blow there. Losing that first game, but able to win three in Easy monthly uh, speed run though. Good shit, Light. Let me send him a message. Damn, sorry. Quick message to Light saying congrats. It was good practice. Okay, now I'm back. And in another tab, a full a diary one, dedicated wild to the creation and the of Silk Road Wisteria and with his name written in there. That is the story of how Ross Ulbricht was tracked and caught by using a simple Google search. During his trial in New York City, a 33-page document was brought to light with direct messages <clears> proving <throat> that Ross paid over $1 million in Bitcoin to hire Hells Angels bikers to murder five people. Holy and shit. that's going to be the rest of this video. First, I'm going to need to introduce you to a couple of the starting characters. Lucy Drop was a vendor who sold LSD on Silk Road, and his product was good. 
Eventually, though, he starts selling weaker and weaker products before performing what people would consider an exit scam. Friendly Chemist is the first point of contact to Dread Pirate Roberts, who is Ross Ulbrich and the owner slash creator of Silk Road. March 13th, 2013. Can you please get Dread Pirate Roberts to message me right away? It's very serious, a matter of life and death. Also has to do with the identities of a dozen top vendors and thousands of Silk Road customers. It's very important, so please get him to message me right away. I will not talk to anyone but Dread Pirate Roberts, so please do not ask me what this is. What site to. is this? I might have missed it. What what site is he posting this on? Thanks for the 10 gift subs, Trey. Thanks for the generosity tonight. There's some Finrear and Charm. Oh, this is just directly on Silk Road? Can you still access all the Silk Road, like, forum posts? I figured by the, like, I figured when it went down, all of it went down. Oh, just mirrors? Okay, so I guess just re-uploads of it? Alright. I assume that Kira was, like, literally looking at these recently. Okay, okay. okay. Got, got it. exactly what he asked for. The next day, Ross replied simply, What can I do for you? A few hours later, a friendly chemist There's claimed he was Lucy Winter Drop's supplier, Rex. waiting for payment, which Lucy Dropper told him is being withheld by the Silk Road market and therefore by Dread Pirate Roberts himself. He goes on to claim that Koku. he has put a keylogger on Lucy Drop's computer and can prove it with his login details. Sucks. He gave $900,000 of product to Lucy Drop for $200,000 up front. He accused DPR, Silk Road, and Lucy Drop of working together to scam people and he continued to threaten to release all the information about the Silk Road users if it wasn't for the fact that he would be paid $500,000. To this, Dread Pirate Roberts responded with the truth. He'd never spoken to Lucy Drop. He had no dealings with him in the first place. There was no deal. He, he wasn't under. scamming anybody. The, and he said suggested that Lucy Drop must be tricking him. This, however, did not convince Friendly Chemist. He doesn't Just believe showered. there was no deal. His life was in danger from quote, not regular people. He just needs to be paid as soon as possible or he will release the customer information, which would drastically harm the Silk Road business. The vendor information would probably result in most of the top vendors for Silk Road being busted by the authorities. I will get in touch with Lucy Drop and get back to you. DPR wanted all the information he'd harvested from the keylogger so he could verify it. And clearly at this stage, he was trying to verify whether or not Friendly Alchemist had damaging information, which he claimed to have, and how damaging it would be. Sizing oh, up- Hold on, hold on. Jesus is going by very quick. God damn. This is like that shit you'd see in a really bad B movie and just assume that it could never be real. Like just the way he talks makes it seem super fake. When you think of like $900,000 worth of LSD being moved, you think of like someone like really like all together really buttoned up and scary and this guy's actually talking like a like a middle school girl here. She has wild Thanks for the resub, Frizzy. How big of a threat he was to the whole operation. Thanks for the Four minutes after hey, what's he going on, juicers? reply to Friendly Kevin, hey, he also contacted Lucy Drop for the very first time. I've been contacted by a member named Friendly Chemist. He claims to know you and has done business with you in real life. He's making wild accusations and threats against you, me, and other members of the community. If you indeed know him, could you please provide me with his name and address? I'd like to stop him in his tracks by revealing that I know who he is mm. and will retaliate if he does anything stupid. Please don't contact him if possible. Signed Heisenberg. I'd like to handle it myself. Lucy Drop didn't reply. Friendly chemist replied to his primer, message asking zombie. for the keylogger information, stating that he didn't harvest the customer logs, but instead that Lucy Drop, like an idiot, kept in-depth logs of every single transaction he ever made. Thousands of orders, 20 or more vendor identities, 5,000 customer identities, and more. He included a long list of addresses from Rattis, 5,000 customer identities. Damn, it's been so long since I uh, learned about the Silk Road thing. I forgot that the site looked like this. Like, actually straight out of old Gears of War forums. That setup is like actual stock template. 
And they were moving millions worth of illegal shit. Crazy. <laughs> they put no effort into the UI. ...and more, included a long list of addresses from around the world, which was redacted from the document, but did prove he did have what he said he did. DPR reassured him that he would get in touch once he'd heard back from Lucy Drop, which, of course, Friendly Chemist did not appreciate, since this gave him no clear timeline on when he would be getting the money he allegedly needed to pay off the people who was threatening his family. These people I borrowed money from have been asking me to meet with them and said they don't want to have to come and find me. I'm scared, and you don't seem to even care that you guys are scamming me and putting my life in danger. On March 16th, 2013... You don't say. The people peddling Lucy millions Drop worth of drugs don't care about you? For an undisclosed reason for the last <laughs> I'm fucking months, shocked. And his business partner had stolen his operation, cutting him out of the money and the account. This business partner was now allegedly posing as Lucy Drop and selling weak products or scamming using the reputation he had built up. In this message, he asked how to contact Dread Pirate Roberts. DPR immediately saw this and contacted the account. Hi there. How did this new person gain access to your account? Is there some the the real Lucy Drop responded stating he didn't gain access as they were partners in real life and they started a Lucy Drop vendor together. He handled the account until he was picked up on a warrant for prior drug Lucy offenses rips. and affirming that Friendly Chemist was in fact their middleman for obtaining the product and ends the message asking this question. How do you know Friendly Chemist? This, of course, is a mistake. The first mistake we see. DPR never mentioned Friendly Chemist to Real Lucy. The only time he mentioned Friendly Chemist was to an account that he allegedly no longer has access to, as it was stolen by his partner over half a year ago. At this stage, just to make sure we're all following along with the characters in the timeline, Lucy Drop is the vendor that allegedly was exit scamming and has not yet replied to anybody. Dread Pirate Roberts is the Silk Road admin who is being blackmailed, by friendly chemist who alleges he is Lucy Drop's plug and a middleman for some very dangerous people who he owes money to. Real Lucy Drop claims he's the original owner of the Lucy Drop account and he's just been released from prison. DPR now responds to Real Lucy Drop stating he's being blackmailed by friendly chemist and that he's glad he knows him. He wanted the address. Ooh, the he didn't pick up on that? Anything he could provide. I need his real world identity so I can threaten him with violence if he were to release any names. I can't let him release those IDs. Real Lucy Drop was of course not keen on this idea. I don't know how I feel about that solution. Remember that he also knows my real world identity and his evidence on me as well. I'm sure you are well aware of what would happen to me if my information was to be released. He would instead set up a meeting and try to reason- Damn it, I want to read the rest of that. I fucking hate what money does to people. I mean, isn't the whole thing about money? I think he's going a little too hard on the theatrics there. Thanks to the resub, Grego, and the Prime Lieutenant. No, I just showered. My hair's not greasy. I just got out of the shower. Released, he would instead set up a meeting and try to reason with Friendly Chemist, to which DPR responds simply, Okay, Lucy, do me proud. Real Lucy Drop came back a day later with a lot of information, essentially reaffirming that Friendly Chemist would release the information as the people he was dealing with were not playing around. The people he borrowed the product from are a big criminal organization in Canada, the Hells Angels. A plan was presented. The plan involved DPR paying Friendly Chemist what he owed this gang and in return he would provide drugs to be sold to pay back the loan. Friendly Chemist would also give up his identity as collateral in case DPR was worried of his payment being received Jesus and still releasing Christ. the document damaging the Silk Road market. DPR, of course, didn't like this plan. Give me his identity so I will have leverage in dealing with him. You said you don't know what to do, so let me take over and give me all the info you have so I have the best chance of diffusing this situation. Really JC and was not convinced by this. Yes, I do know his identity, but you threatening him will not help the situation. He's deathly afraid of the people he owes money to, and they already know where he lives and where his kids go to school, etc. He was not going to give up the information on Friendly Chemist, not due to the risk of his so-called supplier, but because he was afraid he would turn witness if he got spooked and turn in information about himself, resulting in him going to prison. Do not bother messaging me again if the message does not contain his personal information. I'm not fronting money to anyone, and I won't be blackmailed. 
you don't know how to handle the situation, but I do. Dread Pirate Robert's response was final, and this finality seemed to have gotten through to real. Damn, this guy's kind of hard. If you really think you have a good idea to deal with him, I'll give you the information you want about his identity. Please understand why I'm hesitant, as it is my freedom we're dealing with. He then asked how to send over the ID with plain text or PGP, Levi. which is an encryption service commonly used on the darknet. DPR then immediately went back to Friendly Chemist. Have your suppliers contact me here so I can work something out with them. Do not tell them I owe you money. You should copy paste this message to them. At the same time, he sent a PGP key over to Real Lucy Drop so he could send him over the encrypted ID, which is exactly what Real Lucy Drop did. The information that was sent, however, was not complete. It didn't have a full. What was that last kit. bit? Have the any job openings? That was sent, however, what? Damn, this guy's on the grind. <laughs> All right. Okay then. Man's being hunted by the Hell's Angels, and then just takes a second, like, "Hey, bro." Like, can I work for you? Like, what's up with that? It was not complete. It didn't have a full address as DPR responded asking again for his exact address. At this point in the story on March 25th, 12 days after the first private message interactions from Friendly Chemist and DPR, a new user is introduced, Red and White. And this is where it starts to get real crazy. The first message reads, I was asked to contact you. We are the people Friendly Chemist owes money to. Oh my we hold God. Him and him only responsible for the missing product or money. He was apparently only getting in touch to find out what exactly DPR wanted. DPR of course wanted to clarify the whole situation. He himself didn't owe anyone any money, but was instead being blackmailed by Friendly Chemist. I'm not entirely sure what the best action to take is, but I wanted to be in communication with you to see if we can come to a conclusion that works for everyone. At this point, DPR propositions Red and White. You have lots of product, why not sell it on our marketplace? Red and White, of course, was intrigued by this. How much is it possible to sell on here if we listed every product far cheaper than everyone else? We have a majority hold over most of the movement of products in Western Canada. He also touches on the Friendly Chemist situation, how Friendly Chemist will not meet up with them due to fear of what they may do to him, how the gang might not want to sell on silk with oh, them Western Canada. We're just going to gloss over that bottom part. Chemist situation. I wanted to read this. Jesus Christ. Holy shit. Question. How friendly chemists will not meet up with them due to fear of what they may do to him. How the gang might not want to sell on Silk Road due to this missing $700,000. If you can get friendly chemists to meet up with us or pay us his debt, then I'm sure I would be able to get people in our group to give this online side of business a try. After this message, DPR contacted Real Lucy Drop again, clearly desperate to get the full address of friendly chemist now that he has this fantastic offer from Red and White. Why haven't you gotten the address yet? Bring me the Thanks address and $1,000 in Bitcoin is yours. He also responded back to Red and White. In my eyes, Friendly Chemist is a liability and I wouldn't mind if he was executed, but then you'd be out your 700K. Accompanying this blunt opening, oh he also God. gave up information he gained from Real Lucy Drop, the full name, age, rough address location, as well as the fact that Friendly Chemist has a wife and three kids. The rest of the message is information on how much money they could make from selling product on the Silk Road website. Red and White, however, no longer needed that information. He already knew who Friendly Chemist was, and he also has another prize. We have kidnapped Friendly Chemist's partner, Jin, and are on the hunt for Friendly Chemist. This news was exciting to DPR. I understand, and that is great news about Jin. If I understand the situation, he's the one responsible for your loss. Now, to take a quick break and clarify on the role... Jesus you know, Christ, I don't remember any of this from the last time I learned about Silk Road. Is Lucy Drop, the partner of real Lucy Drop, who allegedly stole his business and used his reputation to scam. Jin would then be responsible for selling the product from Friendly Chemist and therefore owing him the $700,000 that he would need to pay back to Red and White. However, at this point, Red and White clarifies that they are no longer missing any product. There is no loss anymore also. We were able to recover all of our missing product when we grabbed Jin. After some questioning, 
He admitted he was intending on moving to a different country and setting up a new seller account on this site. We don't take too kindly to thieves. He's gone. This is when Friendly Chemist started to ramp up his pressure. He knows now that his partner has been taken out and he's panicking big time. You leave me no choice. I want 500,000 USD within 72 hours oh or I'm going God. to post all the info I have. I can't go back to my home. Real quick, I guess uh, this may be like spoilers going forward. So when Silk Road went down, all of this went into the hands of authorities, clearly. Was that confirmed to be real? Like that actually happened? They actually did take out that guy's partner? Because I imagine with that Silk Road coming down, all of the information got into their hands. It is spoilers. Okay, so he does touch on it. Okay, sorry. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. I haven't watched the Silk Road shit in a while, and I don't remember any of this from when I did learn about it. Thanks for five gift subs, Meef. Appreciate it, man. And the 10 gift subs socks. Jesus Christ. Thank you again, man. And the resub seashells. Um, and I've had to move my wife and kids somewhere else. And I need. I guess, hold on. Before we continue, I'm going to throw out a theory. I think this is all one big play to try and squeak money out of DPR. That's my guess. Don't tell me if I'm right or wrong. But that's just the impression I get because it seems like you can make multiple accounts on here without any kind of like real verification process, obviously. So I'm thinking this is all like one big ploy to get like 500k from DPR. And it's all orchestrated by one or two people, something like that, maybe. I need the money so I can move my family and start a new life. What's it going to be? DPR tries to calm him down. Don't do anything foolish. The people you owe money to have caught up with Jin and reclaimed their losses. I spoke to them and calmed them down. They are likely going to become vendors here on SR. Now you can calm down too. Go back to your normal life and don't get involved in this stuff anymore. This did not have the intended effect at all. You think I don't know what they did to Jin? You think I can just go on with my life? You don't know these people. I owed them money and I ran away from them. It's over for me. He doubled down on the threat, though of course now stating that he only had 63. Let me see. <clears throat> three hours remaining 63 hours to pay the five hundred thousand dollars or risk having the identities of over five thousand silk road users exposed for buying illegal drugs and services decimating a large chunk of dpr's business and exposing dozens of vendors that would also destroy the site's product supply DPR's response to this threat was strangely calm. Do me a favor and make it 96 hours. I will get back to you on Monday. I want to work this out, but I have big plans for this weekend and I don't want to have to deal with this. This wasn't a lie. He did have big plans, though they were plans that Friendly Chemist would definitely not be enjoying. As soon as this message was sent to Friendly Chemist, stalling for time, DPR immediately reached oh, out to Red Fuck. Red. This is where his weekend's big plans would be revealed. I hate to come to you with a problem when we are just starting to get to know one another, but Blake, friendly chemist, is causing me problems. Are you still looking for him, or now that you found Jin, have you given up? I would like to put a bounty on his head if it's not too much trouble for you. What would be an adequate amount to motivate you to find him? Necessities like this do happen from time to time for a person in my position. I have others I can turn to, but it is always good to have options. Jesus Christ. Right Hopefully this is something you are open to and can be another aspect of our business relationship. Regards, DPR. Red and White was open to facilitating this transaction, though there is no firm price listed as of yet. He describes how they usually handle hits. They're not looking for him anymore for their own reasons, but they could be motivated financially to find him if they could agree upon terms. DPR responded to this with what might be viewed as a slight change of mind on the hit. If you can find his location, that may be enough for me to scare him off. He's trying to blackmail me. Just let me know what you need to make this worth your while. Red and White, however, nudged him slightly with some common sense. If I find his location and you use it against him to scare him, there is a chance he will switch locations again. Thanks, Chase, Speaking from Eternal experience, God and Nameless it will become King a lot Wolf. more difficult to find him again after that, once he knows that there are people capable of finding him. He then goes on to feel out how much DPR would be willing to pay. 
How much was ending this man's life worth to him? Memphis. DPR clarifies the reason for wanting to make him disappear forever. He doesn't owe me anything, but he is threatening to expose the identities of thousands of my clients that he was Leadership able to Chris. acquire working with Jin if I don't pay him off. As you don't take kindly to thieves, this kind of behavior is unforgivable to me, especially here on Silk Road. Anonymity is sacrosanct. It doesn't have what to a be word. clean. Red and White now listed the price. It was expensive. Price for clean is 300,000 plus USD. Price for non-clean is 150 to 200,000 USD, depending on how you want it done. These prices pay for two professional hitters, including their travel expenses and work they put in. We can use out of town hitters if you want as well, but I would not suggest them because they come with an extra cost and you don't seem to care how he's taken care of. When would you like this done? DPR of course was not a fan of the price. He also revealed this is not his first rodeo. Don't want to be a pain here, but the price seems high. Not long ago I had a clean hit done for $80,000 US. Are the prices you quoted the best you can do? I would like this done ASAP as he's talking about releasing the info on Monday. Red and White now knew that he was in the ultimate power. This seems like it's a setup. Negotiation. There's a strict deadline. I think this might be like a vanish within the next 24 the DEA, hours. Maybe? And that means it's unlikely DPR would be able to find another hitter in time for less money, especially since Red and White is the one who... I mean, they're just the talking via DMs on a fucking already. forum site. I'm sorry, but we so can't I, do anything I, for that it price. It really could be like DEA, maybe? 150, and even that is pushing it. Since you need a rush job done, usually we would charge even more. In the interest of business relationship to be, I could do Please 150. Hydrogen and no subliminal. Lower. If 150 does not work for you, we're going to have to pass. He follows up with some information on how this money is distributed, the methods they use for the hits, and then replies again right after to move things along due to the deadline. The time for negotiating was over. He left this message with both a Bitcoin address and finality. I will check the computer in about 10 hours and if I see that you do want to go ahead with this and the payment has been sent, we'll do it today. If you want a picture confirmation of the job afterwards, give me random numbers and I'll have them write them beside him and take a picture for you. DPR responded the same day with confirmation. Thank you R&W, I've only ever commissioned the one or the hit, so I'm still learning this market. I have no problem putting my faith in you and I'm sure you will do a good job. The exchange rate is above 90 right now, so at $90 per Bitcoin, one hundred fifty. Wow, 000, remember when Bitcoin was 90 bucks? Holy shit. If the market shit. tanks in the next few days, I will send more. Here are some random numbers for a picture. Here is the transaction hash for 1,670 Bitcoin to your address. Good luck and be safe. The blockchain doesn't lie. He did send exactly this amount of Bitcoin on this exact date to that exact address. This is clear evidence of Dread Pirate Roberts hiring a hitman to kill friendly chemist, a result of a blackmail that would expose his customers and ruin his market's credibility. He would clearly do anything to keep Silk Road working as he envisioned. Red and White replied a day later. Hold on, give me one sec. Let me just check. Moki's not playing yet, is he? Not yet. Okay. Just needed to check. I don't want to miss it. On April 1st, 2013. Exit one from Scoop in the Prime Willy and of. Wheels. They seized a bunch of stuff he had with him at the time as well. They said he had a couple of laptops and a bunch of USB sticks. Is there anything that belongs to you? They questioned him and he spilled everything he knew. He said that he and Jin were actually working together on this scheme to blackmail you and that they were brought in by a third guy who has been selling on here for a couple of years who is also a scam artist. Apparently he makes selling accounts, sells for a while and then pulls a big scam and just keeps creating new accounts after he does his scams. They got that guy's name also. I will give that to you free of charge when I meet them to get the picture and computer hardware they got. Rest easy though, because he won't be blackmailing anyone again, ever. DPR kept things professional in his response, but he was clearly happy the job was done. This is like actual Breaking Bad shit. More about this third party. Excellent work. Please send any info you can on this third party, along with a picture. The picture can be uploaded here. I have no need for any of his possessions, so you can do what you want with that stuff. Thank you again for your assistance. Red and White replied the next day with a long message explaining exactly what Friendly Chemist spilled in his last moments of interrogation. He goes over how Jin and Friendly Chemist were working with a man named Andrew from Surrey. He was defrauding people in the way we previously covered, essentially making accounts, getting a good reputation, selling great products with above and beyond service, and then after luring people into a false sense of security, would do one big sale and exit scam all the money. He listed two accounts he knows the name of other than Lucy Drop, which were used by this group, Nipple Suck Canuck 
and Tony what a name what a name that many people on the Silk Road forums had long since speculated was I totally forgot they actually just on and on Reddit had a Silk Road subreddit I totally fucking forgot about that holy shit yeah the internet was wild and wacky like 10 years ago Thanks to the Prime Luke and the resub lunatic. RIP Darknet Markets. Yeah, shit was crazy. Actually, Lucy Drop, due to their similarities of writing patterns, method of scam, and location being Canada. Thanks the puzzle Prime Gucci. was starting to fit together, and the picture was clear. This group was orchestrating scams for years now, stealing thousands of Bitcoin and damaging DPR's vision for the Silk Road and he couldn't let them get away with it. After some short one, back and forth about stripping location data from a picture so they could upload proof of the hit <laughs> on Friendly Chemist, the wheels start to turn for the second murder for hire the DPR would put out on the accomplice. If you can find him, I would like to know. He also confirms he received the picture of Friendly Chemist with the numbers next to him after the hit took place, and that he had deleted the picture for safety. Okay, he I was wrong then. take out Andrew, the I thought it was DEA. He also wanted to make sure Friendly it Chemist wasn't. was telling the truth. It wasn't. That man just got fucking blasted, I guess. chance to take him out than hit an innocent person. He also wanted Andrew to be held and interrogated. The idea being, if this was the remaining member of the group defrauding his customers, he would have substantial funds that may be retrievable. Red and White, of course, was open to this and sets about the job. I will send two of my guys to do some recon right now and find out what I can about him and get back to you immediately. We can discuss price later once we know more. PR seemed conflicted about potentially having the wrong man, but at the same time was way more interested in the potential of recovering tens of thousands of stolen Bitcoin. He's likely to be sitting on many thousands of stolen Bitcoin, perhaps tens of thousands. So I would think we'd want to work him over to get those funds back. Is it tier one lady Red scorpion? White returned later that day with the recon. Apparently the supplier of illicit airship products airship. that Andrew was using had rolled on him, giving up what he ordered, the frequency of the orders, and his plans to move out of the province very soon. That might be because he's found out about Jin and Friendly Chemist and he's now scared. The rest of this message retells the information they got from interrogating Friendly Chemist in more detail and how all the information <clears> lined up. He also stated that after finding where Andrea was staying, he had three other people in the house with him for a total of four in the building. The people were also in on the scheme. They were selling product with Andrew, aka Tony76. The reason these three people being in the building and working with him is critically important to the story is that Red and White also talked about a potential 15,000 Bitcoin oh, theft in God. this message. This means that somewhere in that building with these four people, one As of which he knows digital DTR already wants to have one, removed Bobo. from life, could be over 20,000 Bitcoin, which at the time would be worth around $2 million. The message ends, do you want to deal with this Andrew guy or do you want me to put the team on standby? DPR was led to this conclusion like a horse to water and he started to drink. I'm confident enough that is him to move forward. Can we round up all four of them, separate them and get them to out each other and give up their stolen money? He then explains how it could be difficult to recover the Bitcoin if the team of hitters are not familiar with how Bitcoin works and that he would need more information to piece together how much this crew could have actually stolen. Red and White explained that this would be very difficult. He could pull it off, but it would require more hitters and there are no discounts for group jobs. In fact, due to the difficulty, it should go up in price. However, since the working relationship was going good so far, he would do it for $150,000 each. $600,000 total for all four of them to be interrogated some, and then okay, removed dude. from this mortal realm. DPR, however, wasn't hot on this idea. Not on the idea of removing them from life. Yeah, I've got it up right here from Oki. It's just he's not playing thousand dollars. Clearly, the dollar sign was the issue, so it was back to the original plan. Okay, let's just hit Andrew and leave it at that. Try to recover the funds, but if not, then not. How much do you need for this? Red and White, however, hadn't given up on this idea. If you want to hit Andrew only, I can have it done for 150 just like last time. We wouldn't be able to do it at their place though because there are always at least a few of them there from what I'm told since it is their home office. So we wouldn't be able to recover any of his things. He goes on to give his opinion on the situation and how if these other three were left to continue their scams, they would continue yeah, to I did see the issues new smash with DPR it's and cool. Silk Road. He also offers a discount for the whole package. If you would like to do the others as well, I would be able to have it done for 500,000 USD. If you do not want all of them and just Andrew, it would be 150k. 
I would prefer to do all four as it would be better than having to get Andrew somewhere else and have no chance of recovering any potential product slash money he may have. Anything recovered would be split 50-50 with you. This message ends with a prompt for payment. If you would like, just Andrew send 150,000 USD to the same address you sent the other funds to. If you would like all four of them done and product slash money recovered from there, send 500,000 USD to the same address you sent the other funds to. This was enough to convince DPR. Hmm, okay, I'll defer to your better judgment and hope we can recover some assets from them. 500,000 in Bitcoin has been sent. This really After feels... Time, I, I still think this could be like a DEA each. thing. He listed the transaction hash and once again, this transaction is publicly verifiable. On April 8th, 2013, DPR sent 3,000 But Bitcoin then they did take like a picture or something. So maybe not. I don't know. Maybe I'm on copium. He previously sent 150,000 for the murder of Blake, aka Friendly Chemist. Three days later, on April 11th, Red and White messaged DPR to update him on the status of the job. Our hitters have been watching their house and we have a one week window to do it. But I just wanted to ask you a couple of questions before giving them the green light. At this point, he talks about the fluctuating price of Bitcoin and how before they could convert them to real money, the price dumped to 61 USD each. Oof. Essentially, he wanted paying more Bitcoin to cover this fluctuation so they were not massively shortchanged on Bitcoin the job. Bitcoin will never last. DPR replied, letting him know he would be willing to cover the difference. And then it's there is dead. a three day lull in communication before Red and White gets back in touch. That problem was dealt with. I'll try to catch you online to give you details. Just wanted to let you know right away so you have one less thing to worry about. Beyond this, the communication fizzles out very quickly, and this is where the story ends. The story of Ross Ulbrich, aka Dread Pirate Roberts, they kind of is over that. absolutely crazy. At the start of this video, I mentioned six murders for hire, and you may have noticed that we only discussed five so far. The four people in the house and friendly chemists. That's because the sixth murder for hire, the one that DPR claimed to have paid $80,000 for, is a different story altogether, and never actually happened. He had in fact purchased this murder for hire from an undercover DEA agent and it was aimed at a former Silk Road staffer. Now what if I was to tell you that the other five murders for hire, the ones we've just went over, none of those happened either. Fucking called it, I knew it. Trial of Ross Ulbricht, DEA. Where the private messages were first presented, no one by any of the names felt it ever out. existed. He had been scammed though he likely never knew this was the case until we did. Him and Red and White, the supposed Hells Angels contact who had helped him get rid of five people for $650,000 in Bitcoin, continued to speak using an untraceable method of instant chat. But remembering back to the start of this video, Ross kept a detailed diary of the Silk Road's creation and operation, which the federal government gained access what to about the picture though? his laptop. In that diary, he writes that he loaned out $500,000 after this period to Red and White to stop. Yeah, it wasn't the DEA, I guess, but. And then later writes that Red what and White flaked out and disappeared with my half a mil. This means that Ross paid out $1.15 million in Bitcoin to someone who tricked him using multiple accounts, essentially creating an elaborate fan fiction. <laughs> and honestly, it was a brilliant fan fiction. He used the fact that many users drew links between Tony76 and Lucy Drop due to their oh location. Oh my god! Similar, very similar writing styles and methods of exit scamming. And then he introduced enough real world elements while keeping the pressure on after discovering the primary motivations of DPR. As soon as he knew that DPR would do anything he could to protect the Silk Road marketplace, he could just constantly introduce threats and also solutions. Holy Ross was shit! never charged for these five murders for hire that never happened despite the Bitcoin he sent to Red and White being verifiably from his very own personal Bitcoin wallet. He did, however, get charged on seven counts related to drug trafficking, money laundering and computer hacking. And for this, Ross Ulbricht received 30 years to life in prison, which is where he remains today. As for the money in today's market, the total that Ross was scammed out of was 7,225 Bitcoin. God, that's Bitcoin, so much which on the 10th of April 2022 would be worth $308 million. What a scam. As for the scammer, during a later investigation, Bitcoins traded from Red and White's account lined up with another seller on Silk Road named Mary Jane is my muse, both of which were registered on a Canadian Bitcoin exchange that had the name James Ellingson. The Silk Road is the source of many insane stories, but this one for me definitely wins the prize. Yeah, I never heard this one. All right, so it wasn't the DEA, but I did fucking call it at least to some degree. What a genius fanfic scheme. Holy Lord. 
What's the link to this vid? Here, it's on Kira's channel. Kira makes bangers. You probably recognize Kira from when he was covering a lot of, like, the crypto scam stuff. Thanks to sub red and stainless steel. Wikipedia says it was the FBI and Interpol. Well, no, they just confirmed that the person that was doing the fanfic was just, like, an actual scammer. What he said is that the, the hit that he said was a clean 80k hit was a, a setup from the DEA and that wasn't real. But in this video, Kira said that the actual, like, sending of Bitcoin to that wallet went to a scammer. The actual sentence was two life sentences plus 30 years. Yeah, it sounds about right. Thanks for Prime Cheese. What about the pick? That's what I keep wondering. They sent a pick with numbers, and the pick isn't public, obviously, but DPR confirmed the authenticity of it, right? Like, he had to have known. So what did they, did the DEA just, like, murder an innocent person? <laughs> like, just for the sake of getting this guy? Like, eh, ends justify the means, or uh, whatever. You, you know what I'm saying. They staged it? Hmm. Yeah, I guess it could have been like a shitty pick. I don't, I don't know. I guess I'm just used to like 2022 pictures where you can really tell if someone's like <laughs> faking a death, I think, right? Like, I don't know how accurately you could pull that off. They stage picks for things like that a lot, do they? Maybe I'm just not knowledgeable enough on it. There's a prime Star Wars. They faked the moon landing, so... Yeah, true, yeah. <laughs> moon landing wasn't real. Nothing's real. Thanks to get some tray in the prime kins. Today's the 23rd anniversary of the mummy. Is it really? Godspeed to an amazing movie. Amazing franchise, really. I'm so excited for tomorrow, too, Dong. I can't wait. Today was great. If you're in the chat, Kira, good shit again. This, this video was a banger.